Hello, welcome to the Diamond Matt channel. If you're new to me, thanks very much for clicking on this video. I'm Bilton, Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from London. I was making high-end bespoke pieces, handmade, for nearly 25 years. That's a quarter of a century, it makes me feel old. Uh, so yeah, I was lucky enough to be placed amongst some top jewelers in the trade. Uh, I've learned a lot from them. I've learned a lot just from my own experience. Uh, so now I'm in Japan, I'm no longer employed. So I've got uh, time and I've got set up my own little workshop here so I can create this channel. I'm documenting everything I've learned in the past and continue to learn. Beginners, yeah, beginner jewelers, amateurs, they're so important. We really need new people uh, to fight the battle against 3D printers, CAD design jewelry, and just robots that bang out pieces of jewelry just as a commodity to make money as easily and quickly as possible for people. Um, we need to bring it back to a kind of art form that used to be like decades ago. If you research online like old Cartier pieces, like vintage things, proper amazing what jewelers used to do uh, compared to now. And even though now jewelers have got like laser, uh, laser welders and stuff, not really very rarely see anything that really impresses me or I see a design online that impresses me but it's just a render it's not actually a made thing and if it was going to be made it would just be 3d printed and just set by hand so jewelry trade is lost its art form uh, something special about a bespoke handmade piece there's not a lot of it going on I can name a few jewelers in London that are still doing it there's some very talented people that work there uh, but no one's really singing their praises so I want to I want to document how like a Bond Street jeweler would make something because that uh, level of skill isn't really usually found in the high street so if you're excuse me if you're like an apprentice jeweler there's a chance you could do your apprenticeship and then get a job and then move around different companies over like years and years but you'll never get the highest level of training yeah so beginners amateur jewelers thank you for taking up this as a hobby or you're hoping to learn it for a future profession. It's a good little way to make money. It's always nice to have a little plan B. Uh, you can have your full-time job, but it's nice to be working on something that you can get income from uh, another way. Um, so I'm setting up this new playlist, a new kind of show on the channel. And it's just specifically for beginners, like people who are just starting out, because when you're starting something new, you don't know anything. So you don't know about the tools or techniques or what you should do, what your bench should look like or anything so uh, these videos are going to be for for people who are really at the start so this video I'm gonna be talking about charcoal blocks this is the best thing you can do your soldering on I actually use this kind of fake asbestos I don't know what that is kind of hard soldering board uh, they're quite good I suppose but all the top jewelers everyone I've ever worked with in my career doesn't like using them too much uh, always do your soldering on a charcoal block. Now this is a small Japanese one. I thought it was great when I first bought it. It was like double the price of a normal one in the UK. Uh, but it's lasting more than twice the time. Um, seems very dense. But one thing I don't like about it, which has become apparent from using it, when I have something on there and uh, like soldering platinum, when that gets really hot, it turns sort of like glassy, which this stuff does as well a little bit. Um, turns a bit glassy and sticks to platinum and it has to be in the acid for a long long time to get it off So I don't like this for that. So these ones I just bought another one I just had my uh, I had to order it in the UK and then my dad posted it to me uh, so, so This one's just arrived. I do still prefer these they're cheaper it's a bit bigger as well So that extra length is useful when you're doing chains or some long bit of wire whatever you're doing uh, It's just nice to have that to lay things across it. So very light you may feel a bit ripped off because you pay £10, £15, whatever they cost now. Um, but it's an essential piece of kit, really, so no, no harm done, really, paying £15 for it. Do not use on combustible and or contaminated surfaces. Uh, it will soak up oil or water, or tea or whatever, so it's got to be kept dry. Um, yeah, caution should be taken to ensure that the block is fully extinguished. Stays very hot after you soldered on it, so be careful. Uh, Product as a natural material may vary in size, grain, and density. So they're usually buying from the jewelers' places. They're usually very good. You can get unlucky, and it's already broken. Uh, yeah, but you won't have much trouble with them buying from a proper jeweler's place. Okay, so I'm just going to open it up now. Of course, it's just charcoal. Yeah, you can score a line in it. 
like really easily, which is a shame. You want to try and keep it in really perfect condition. So I'm just going to gently get a knife in there, one with a point. It's just kind of like, feels like cling film wrapped around it. That is literally cling film. <laughs> It was the mum of the guy that owns a tool shop when she was doing his sandwiches for her lunch. She did the charcoal blocks after. So there you go. Be gentle with it. Right, now these, when you're working on them, they will inevitably crack open. They split. It's quite a normal thing. It's not great, but it will happen eventually. Sometimes they last a long time before breaking. Sometimes, sometimes they arrive broken because they are almost definitely gonna break on you. Us jewelers, we use our bi binding wire, which I don't really know what it's for. I've never used it making jewelry, uh, but it's great for wrapping around your charcoal block. So when you're soldering, it, you, it will just, one day it'll just go crack, like beep, and it'll just, you'll get a line going across it. So basically it's in two parts, sometimes three parts after that. So if you've got wire going all the way around it, um, just hold it all together. That's another reason why I like it on on another block. When it's in pieces, you don't actually ever really have to touch it. You can move it around like that. But it's just something I got used to. You don't have to do that. Um, if you're doing a lot of soldering, heat can transfer and then get your heat plate in front of your bench if you've got that. That can get very hot. So again, another useful, another reason to have this, have it on something that's um, absorbing the heat more than your bench. So this wire, this is a normal kind of gauge um, binding wire. It's very thin, it's too thin really to go around once. So rather than just going round and round it loads of times, um, what you do is pull out a load long enough to go around it twice. We're gonna twist this up and then with the thicker gauge twisted binding wire, then go around it. Right, now some jewelers will put it in their pendant drill, their micro motor, whatever they got, They'll hook it on whatever way they can then just hold on to the end with a pair of pliers and then just spin it and then just the wire goes and uh, works really neatly and really well. For some reason, I don't like doing it. I don't have a reason for not liking doing it, but I just, uh, I just don't do it. So I twist it a few times around the end. So then what I do is hold it with my pliers there, put my finger hooked in the end. You see that? Right, let's grip in. Twist it round a few times. Move my pliers along. Twist it round a few times. Move my pliers along. Twist it round a few times. It's twisted all the way down the wire, by the way. But I just like holding it down a bit further. You'll probably find this as you progress over the years. You just have your own ways of doing things. Even though you might be shown a better way of doing it, you just kind of stick with your own ways. I don't know if it's stubbornness or whatever. So yeah, you can see that whole thing is twisted now. I, f I, find, I find that easy in the faffing about with little tools and hooks and stuff, trying to get it in there. I'll just show you close up. It's not, you don't have to do it, doesn't have to look nice. It just has to be generally twisted up just so it's going to hold like that. So that's basically a, a sort of thicker gauge bit of wire. So hopefully you've got enough to go around your charcoal block. I'll just hold it, like try and keep it in the middle. You know what I mean? Sorry, I can't show you, it's all off camera. Trying to keep it in the middle, just line it up, pull it a little bit tight. Still got to be careful with your charcoal block, mind. If you've got enough to go around twice, go around twice. Now the bits where they cross over, sorry, a bit awkward to show you this. Um, where it crosses over, give it a couple of twists by hand. I will then snip that off with side cutters. Snip. Then what I do is, it should be reasonably tight, yeah, just with your fingers, but you can tighten it up now by sort of pulling it and twisting it again. Be careful, because you can twist it, turn it so tightly at that point, you can just snap your binder wire and you have to sort of start again. 
I just give it a couple of twists and that little bit sticking out, I just fold it down and there you go. That's a nice, neat way to have wire around your block. Now, it doesn't matter if that cracks, it's all gonna be held together. Now, remember earlier I read out what it said on that sticker, it said it about being a natural product and um, it can be, it can sort of varies its density. Its density, I think its density is inconsistent across the whole thing. Um, I have been told, I don't really know, but I can't, I haven't really figured it out, but I've been told when it's sort of all tight in one spot and then you're soldering on that spot, because you've just got a little piece there and just putting heat there. The charcoal block just getting hot in one point, yeah, so it can, I don't know, something scientific happens and it breaks. Like, <laughs> the charcoal molecules expand or something only in one spot and that's what can cause it to break. Uh, it's not necessarily an internal fracture already there. Um, so one thing I've heard, if you've got something, I mean, it's gas is running out, it's hardly anything coming out of there. But if you've got a uh, sort of a quite a soft, woolly kind of flame, just evenly go over the whole thing, go backwards and forwards, and just try and get the whole thing hot, gently, like simultaneously, the whole thing hot. So you're not just heating up one point, just trying to get it all going hot at the same time. Uh, I've heard this helps. Okay, so that's it. That's what this uh, new show is going to be like. I'll just have one thing and uh, I'll explain a little bit about it, like how it's used, how to set it up. Um, sometimes some tools have more than one use, so I can I have to explain extra things like that. Um, yeah, really with the beginner in mind, people who have not done this before. So uh, yeah, I'm pleased to be able to help with this channel, people like that. Thank you for becoming a jeweler or being interested in it. If, if you've already got the interest to be a jeweler, then I see that as you're already capable of becoming a good jeweler because the interest is that the first thing it's like the foundation of wanting to do it wanting to learn more wanting to try harder wanting to try again uh yeah that interest is like the, the special magic ingredient to becoming a good jeweler so yeah welcome and uh, i hope this channel continues to be useful to you and last of all but certainly not least of all Big thanks to two new patrons I got to the channel. Thank you very much. This is very, very good news and uh, I'm so grateful to all the patrons. Um, it's really helping the channel grow and enabling me to do, do more for you. I wanna, I wanna give away more of what I know and it's becoming more possible um, with, the, with the monthly donations I'm getting through patrons. Um, so we've got Ted Jones and Jenny Durin, or Durin, sorry if I mispronouncing your names. Um, yeah, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it and you are you are now officially part of the history books on this channel really keen on growing it very large and hopefully creating a huge reference library library and uh archive of jewelers knowledge that'll be useful for many years to come thank you thanks for watching uh stay tuned if you subscribe get that notification bell clicked and you can uh see more videos like this, they'll be useful to you very soon. Thank you for watching, bye.